welcome to today's anniversary webinar with your second desired topic, plugging, filling, tending. I am Andreas Schirp, your host of today's World Electronic Circuit Board Technology webinar, and I would like to welcome you. The speaker of today's webinar is our expert, Andreas Dreher, from our technical project management at World Electronic Circuit Board Technology. Welcome, Andreas. And now I wish you lots of fun and new information. Thank you for the warm welcome. Today I want to go with you through a pretty big topic about plugging, filling and tenting. So in general of closing of through holes in the PCB. In the following slides I want to introduce you to the uh, topic um, and we will have a look as a beginner on the possibilities of solar mask, what we can do with solar mask, and if we have more advanced um, features, what we can do uh, on top of that. But one step after another. A few words to myself. I'm Andreas Dreher. Um, I've worked since more than 20 years in the facility in Schopfheim. Um, I had in my, my career different uh, positions, uh, beginning with a quality lab, making micro sections, uh, later qualifying and testing new base materials. And in the meantime, uh, I help customers with new and complex HDI designs and the ever more growing need for high-speed boards is also um, my part. If you have any questions either to this topic, plugging, filling or tenting, or to my uh, high-speed things, you can contact me with the shown phone number or via email. So let's jump right into it. Here we see a screenshot of a typical PCB layout we have some uh, solder pads uh, with typical two-legged components, pretty simple layout. The designer uh, put in some vias to route the signals into the PCB. The word via is from the Latin language and typically means path or way. And actually this describes uh, the use of vias in PCBs pretty good. It provides us a path to different layers or to the bottom side of a PCB. On the schematics, on the right hand side, you can see a cross section uh, through a PCB. The red areas indicates uh, conductive traces typically formed with copper. Uh, the, the solder pads here, the through hole, the inner layers. In gray, you see the FR4 base material and green is the solder mask used. If we want to assemble this board, and here you can see an area where we have no barrier between the solder pad and the through hole, um, it can happen that the solder here on gray, instead of forming a pretty nice reliable uh, meniscus, it can flow away through the via and disappears. Then the solder joint is either too weak and not reliable or, as in this case, not even present. So the board is not working at all. So we have to prevent the solder from passing through the vias that uh, we have enough solder left. This is done by creating a defined state of the via and so make a reliable and producible PCB overall. When we are working on solder mask, uh, there are different options. And if we uh, look on, on the left hand side, we have a landing pad of the via. The black uh, is, is the hole, the drill hole through the board. And in this design, the designer put 
no clearance at all. And maybe he assumes that the hole is completely covered and electrically isolated. If we have a look on a real world example of such a VR with no clearance, it's pretty obvious that we have here some metal present and actually it's an undefined condition. During the soda mask process, we apply a liquid uh, lacquer or ink on the board and yeah, depending on, on different layout conditions, uh, process parameters, of course, used materials, uh, a lot of things can happen randomly. For example, the soda mask can stay on top and only a few drops flow into the hole or the hole is flooded or even the, the soda mask can flow through the hole and disappear and is too thin later. So yeah, this is more or less a random state and it's a uh, yeah, worst case scenario for all of us. So our recommendation would be at the clearance um, to the center of your pet. Um, typical parameters are final diameter plus 250 microns that we have a little bit of wiggle room for process tolerances. So then we have a defined state that the most of the, the soda pad or the, the landing pad of the VR is covered by soda mask and the hole itself is not covered and we can apply uh, the final finish to it. Another option is the right hand side here, the designer has chosen to completely uh, remove the soda mask <clears throat> from the landing pad. Um, that's a an, an viable option. The middle uh, example is, is from the age of the uh, wave soldering, where you don't want to have soda uh, going onto this pad. In the meantime, most of the boards are produced with the SMD process. Uh, the the so, uh, solda is is formed by uh, stencil printing, and if you have no opening in the stencil, no solder will be applied to this hole, and it is available as test point. So both examples are up to the designer's choice. The left hand is maybe not so a good option. If you want to know more about solder mask parameters, design rules, and so on, you can find a lot of them in our basic design rules. Andreas Schilp uh, made the webinar about it and explained a lot of things there a few weeks ago. And in the meantime, you can find it uh, in, in YouTube if you missed the opportunity. Also, you can download them either by uh, browsing our homepage in the PCB section or using this link in the presentation if you get the slides afterwards. So we discussed the prevention of soda passing through the via, but what if, is, what if, if I have more um, requirements to the board? Sometimes there are uh, applications where coating is necessary and I don't want that my, my coating um, passes the PCB or we have uh, vacuum testing where the board is sucked on a needle adapter and should be a tight vacuum seal. If we have today any physics here uh, in, in the webinar, excuse me for use of vacuum in this discussion. What I mean is here, a low pressure application with maybe 0 0.1 millibars. It's actually not a vacuum. Another example is I want to use VIA in PET, but instead of fan out uh, all the VIAs, I want to have the VIA in the pad in the solder joint, or as shown here in the middle section, uh, use them as thermal VIAs to spread the heat away from my components. Uh, or very tight, very tiny uh, HDI designs, what is with them? We will see a lot of ideas here in the next um, slides. In the past, 
a lot of different technologies involved to fulfill all these needs shown uh, on the last slide. And with all these different process names, uh, sometimes um, special brand names, it's very hard to define very clearly what the customer really wants in his design. So, yeah, a lot of years ago, the IPC created this standard where they um, labeled all the different types and, and sorted them in groups. Mainly, we have three different groups with, with different um, applications. First group is this tented via, where I tent the hole with some dry film. We have the plugged via, where we fill the hole partially with some material. Or we have the filled via section in the lower part where we completely fill the via and uh, make them full of it. First example, the tented via. Uh, here, um, a dry film is used and roller coated on top over the via and yeah, tends the via. Uh, this is possible uh, single-sided or double-sided in the IPC. This is also mentioned with this indexes here. Uh, you can find, for example, type via 1A for single-sided or type via uh, 1B for double-sided. This is also fitting to the other technologies, most of them where it's applicable. For, for ease of use now in this presentation, um, I only put um, uh, some some expression on it when when there is uh, a need for it and we you know, don't feed it all through makes it more complicated to understand. The tented via option uh, in in my 20 year career I never seen an application in our uh, German facilities we don't use this technology and I just for for summary uh, to give you an idea what would be type one and type two is used it here in the section, but we don't have a closer look. We will focus on, on the available via types. Uh, type 3 plugged via would be the first one. Also, we have uh, this, this groups, yeah. Um, plugged via type 3 is filling with, with some resin, for example. Uh, type 4 is the same process covered, for example, with solar mask. Um, so they are very similar to each other. Let's have a look on the type 3. In the type 3 plugged via, uh, the definition is a via with a material applied allowing partial penetration into the via. The process used is typically a silk screen application. We will have a look later what that means in detail. As a material, we use a thermal curing ink. Um, the benefit of this process, it provides us a good vacuum seal for in-circuit testing. It's actually pretty cheap. The silk screen printing is, is not so difficult at all. Uh, and so we can offer it um, relatively cheap. We have the opportunity of locally selecting uh, where we want to have the plugging or not. So if necessary, you can design your layout that some uh, holes are plugged, others not. Very, very important if you have uh, vias only for connection next to some through hole for, for component assembly, the through hole vias don't want to like plug because then assembly is not possible. We have some concerns. Uh, due to the silk screen process, it is possible that we have some some bumps over the solder mask, and it's possible that we have up to 70 microns. Via impaired technology is not possible because you cannot solder on top of the plaque vias, and uh, we have limited uh, fine line designs. Uh, we will come in the next slide to it why that is. Also, here are some typical design rules on hand. 
Um, again, here as a sketch, we have a partial filling uh, with a bump. Very important is the final diameter in the layout. The plugged via mask, of course, has to be oversized to provide a good edge coverage and also, yeah, again, give a little wiggle room for tolerances. Um, in our German factories, it's not possible to have double-sided plugging. Um, we have, after the first process, if we would do it on the bottom side, we will have here an air pocket. This air will uh, expand during the curing process and push out the newly li still liquid uh, plugged via material out of the hole and, and it's not possible at all. Yeah, let hit, <clears throat> let's have a look on, on the process. Uh, we start with the PCB board after final finish, uh, after solder mask. We create a silk screen, apply it to the board, align it. Uh, we use a blade to move the paste on top of the hole. Uh, then we create uh, this plug when the silk is removed. The board is put to the oven to cure it out to get the final properties um, that it can withstand, for example, your solder process in, in the next steps. And so we can form uh, the final plugged via shape. I mentioned that fine line um, has to be taken very carefully. Uh, we have um, a distance the via to any solder pad uh, because as you can see here on the picture it is possible that you have some contamination of the ink on top of the board because the, the screen printing um, yeah, compared to HDI design is pretty rough and also there is some, some bleed out possibly, uh, possible what you can see on this picture. So take this rule uh, with this distance carefully. Also this, this distance from, from the plugged via to the SMD pad is on top and bottom. Okay, the type 4 via is not so often used. Um, typically we do the solder mask before and then apply the plugged via uh, in some, some uh, special applications. It's possible to change the order when it's a type 4 plugged and covered via. Let's have a look on the filling uh, stuff, which is also very interesting. Here we see a cross section from a typical sequential build up board with a type 5 via. The definition from the IVC again, it's a via with a material applied into the via targeting a full penetration and encapsulation of the hole. Um, the IPC talks here of full penetration in, in the IPC 6012, for example. There are some, some uh, comments that a few voids, especially in the middle of the board, are uncritical, uh, possible. Also, some, some dimples are possible. With our process, by vacuum filling and sending afterwards, we get a very even and flat surface, uh, which provides some, some benefits. Um, the material used is a non-conductive field material, also we can cure them thermally um, and it's a epoxy basin, very tough afterwards after the curing. The benefit again, we have a very good vacuum seal, a very homogeneous and flat surface for the sanding process and it's often used on inner layers to fill the buried layers to avoid some, some dimples on top. Some concerns comes with all new technology. With the filling process, <clears throat> all through holes in this process are filled. So if you want to use it on the outer layer, it is possible, but then some special considerations are taking care about the component holes. 
we come back to this topic later. Compared to the silk screen process uh, with a vacuum filling and the sanding, we have a lot of more equipment, different process steps, so it's more expensive and takes more time. The type 6 filter via is a very similar process, um, similar benefits and concerns. You can cover it with solder mask afterwards and then in this case it's only on one side covered. We have a type 6A filter via, uh, pretty similar to the type uh, 5. Let's have a look on the production process. We start by drilling for holes. Uh, next step is the galvanic process. First, of course, a cleaning process, and then the metallization of the copper takes place, where we apply copper on the unstructured surface on top, and also copper in the holes. Then we move on in a vacuum chamber and apply a filling from both sides at the same time. The vacuum provides a very good filling with less bubbles and voids, uh, but there are some residues on the surface left. <clears throat> the ink is cured in the oven to get the final properties and hardens out. And these residues on top and bottom, of course, have to be removed to achieve this flat surface. This is done by a sanding process, really mechanical grinding to remove all excess um, material. Here I have my type 5 uh, via ready. If I move on and add another metallization step on top, we have a cap metallization so we can create the lid on top. So the only difference of a type 5 via to a type 7 via is the lid on the end. I talked before about um, through hole components. If I want to assemble through holes, uh, if all holes are filled, it's not possible. If I want to use them on the outer layer, I have to go back, drill a second time in, uh, for holes, apply copper to the holes, and in the same time, I apply copper on top of a surface. And as more copper I have on the surface, as wider, uh, space I need in, in the structure. If I want to edge some, some tracks with a given line and space, as high the copper amount, as more space we need between the line to create these things. Very important um, step here, which have to be always considered by using this technology. Um, we come back to this topic in a few slides. <clears throat> the material combination have to be carefully chosen. Uh, when, when we at Word Electronic um, introduce a new material, we do a pretty intensive qualification and check that all the materials are fitting to each other. In this example, I've shown you a CTE expansion of the standard TGR 135 material. As you can see, it starts the, the expansion in set very drastically over the TGE value, where the copper is, is pretty straightforward until it melts at, at thousand somewhere degrees. As higher this mismatch is, as more stress we introduce on the board. And at soldering temperature, yeah, there's a lot of stress. So that's why the solder, total solder, um, processes are limited. In a typical advantage um, or in a typical um, field application, we have maybe minus 40 degrees to 100 degrees or 125 degrees, but even this mismatch is enough that after a few hundred or a few thousand cycles, uh, the board can fail. To make it more reliable, close fit between the materials necessary. So we have chosen a filling material which has a very, very good fit at TG150 and higher materials. So we can use TG150 and TG170 materials with filling. 
um, we don't recommend it using with the TG135 material. Another example or very important point here is um, in the grinding process by the sanding, uh, we can have some removal of copper. You see here very close up a micro section of a board. It's the edge of a through hole of a via. We have the epoxy material here on this side, the um, FR4 material and the copper on the surface and on the hole. The IPC6012 describes pretty good um, that we have not only enough copper in the holes, uh, but also the so-called wrap copper. So the copper which wraps from the surface into the hole has to be on a certain value. <clears throat> this makes things sometimes pretty complicated because you have to have at the class three application, for example, 25 microns at least in the hole and at least 12 microns um, on this wrap copper. If you plate <clears throat> a lid on top, you add another 15 microns maybe, and then you get a pretty high amount of copper on the surface. This will be checked by us, by microsection uh, as a process control, can also be um, required by you in, in a first sample, expect, uh, sample report, for example. <clears throat> we'll come back to the structure size later on the type 7 vias. Because they are pretty closely uh, related to each other, uh, we have also uh, common design rules. Again, here cross section uh, of the filled and capped type 7 uh, via. You can use them on the inner layer, you can use them on the outer layer. Uh, the process pretty similar to the type 5. Um, you get a good vacuum seal again, flat and uh, homogeneous surface. Here, finally, the via impact technology is possible. With this lid, uh, I can solder uh, components on top and can use directly the vias on, on solder pads. Again, all holes in this process stage are filled. Uh, if I have through holes, I have to go several times through dil drilling and metallization. Through this additional third uh, cap plating, <clears throat> another process uh, is necessary, so it's even more expensive. And the reduction of fine line technologies are possible. Typical design rules um, for in a layer application, we have a board thickness from 6.5 to 1.6 millimeters in this process stage. So <clears throat> the actual thickness during the filling, the board in the final thickness can, can later be thicker. But during this stage of the process, you know, we can see here all these little uh, bumps after the curing of the ink. Um, is possible. A very important step is the aspect ratio. So the uh, how thick the board is compared to what is the drill diameter. Um, we have to apply copper to it. We have to fill it. Is it if the aspect ratio is too high, both uh, processes are not reliable possible. So this is a very important uh, design consideration. The smallest drill tool, really the, the drill diameter which we use on the machine is uh, 250 microns. The final diameter will be 150 microns through the added copper. The pad structure should be 500 micron and the biggest possible uh, final diameter is 0 0.65. If it's too big, uh, we get not a good filling process. <clears throat> The layout clearance for pads and tracks and so on should be at least 120 microns on this filled layer. Same applies 
to outer layer usage, um, bigger board thicknesses are possible, uh, but the aspect ratio is actually a little bit lower. Uh, as bigger the board gets, as harder it is to get all the material needed inside. There, there are a lot of things to consider, and it's often not, not so easy and simple understand, understood. So our offer is contact us as early as possible in your design phase to get a fitting stack up with optimal parameters for your needs. Uh, it's not possible to, to <laughs> explain all possibilities just in a few slides. So feel free to contact us, uh, explain us what, what your need is, what your component size is, what your uh, pitch is, and maybe you have some, some impedance um, uh, values also to take care. We can create you a stack up, uh, define the process, and then you don't get disappointed if, if the board is later not producible. You can contact us either via my personal email or with our team email, hdi at wonline.de. I mentioned it a few times before. Here now, finally, the process values. Again, a close up section of a type 7 micro or uh, a type 7 via uh, with a cap plating. Here's the filling material with the FA4, the upper layer. And as higher the copper is, uh, here we have a copper thickness on this surface, as wider the line of space has to be to avoid such problems as shown here on this cross section where the copper was too high, the distance too narrow, and we get a bridge. And yeah. Not a good thing to happen. So again, contact us as early as possible to avoid this running into this risk and take these parameters uh, in care. Sometimes with some special applications, difference values are possible, but these are approved parameters and work reliable in a typical product. So the IPC, uh, describes only mechanical through-hole vias, but of course we have some some different applications. For example, the laser-drilled micro vias. We have here similar processes and can fill them in the same step with the epoxy, um, or we can go the copper filling way and fill the micro vias completely with copper. The benefit is again, it is via and pad compatible. I can place it directly into solder joint and can save a lot of space in my design. So create small footprints <clears throat> and also stacked or staggered is possible with both technologies. Um, with the filling process, again, all through holes and microvias in this stage are filled. Um, with the copper filling, there the copper filling is done in a special galvanic machine, pretty expensive one, uh, with special chemistries. There is only limited compatibility with through-hole vias. So again, we have to double check if it's possible to have vias in the same step. If if you can avoid them, just go with stacked micro vias. Uh, will be much simpler. <clears throat> Through these dedicated machines, uh, the process at all is unfortunately pretty expensive. Also a requirement from the IPC, and I think this is 10 years ago now, that they uh, don't recommend placing the microvias directly on top of Type 7 microvias, there are a lot of risks that you can have either cracks on the lid, uh, a bad connection, or yeah, a lot of other problems. So, by a lot of partners, uh, the IPC, the, the German uh, ZVEI uh, quality working group, or even by us, uh, we recommend don't use this technology. And if you have existing layouts, 
we are happy to help you to find a solution to avoid uh, this risk and place them in a staggered configuration 250 um, microns away from the Beridvia. Some practical applications. Uh, I mentioned often the VIA and PET technology. A very common advantage is uh, we have here a board with some uh, high power components <clears throat> and they create a lot of heat. To get rid of the heat in the board, the designer placed some thermal, uh, thermal vias <clears throat> into the pad. We can see here a cross section in the background, the pad, the thermal vias <clears throat> as a type seven uh, via. A <clears throat> uh, type seven micro via, and if I have uh, a component which creates a lot of heat, I have a pretty short path through the board into the aluminum heat sink where the heat can, can be spread. Um, in this example, sometimes more is not better. Uh, if you want, um, you either can create a lot of small thermovias or a few ones but bigger. Uh, we have done a lot of thermal simulations and yeah, yeah, a lot of holes, sometimes not better. Um, it is the total copper amount. And we can, for your application, make you a pretty good simulation where we can design in your layout with your component, with, with your uh, load on the component and create your a thermal simulation and find the best and optimal way to create a reliable solution. If you have a need for it, feel free to contact us on the shown email address and we can quote you um, for your need. Another example is uh, a pretty complex HDI um, board. We have stacked micro vias on three layers. Uh, we have a sequential build up. So first we create the, the inner section with a type 5 uh, via add then sequentially layer by layer by layer all the micro vias on top. We can create fine line uh, um, line and spaces here on, on the inner layer where the copper amount is pretty low. We can create in, on this micro via layers uh, impedance traces and some shielding. Um, and next to it, we have some type seven micro vias in the same board and next to it, some through holes. Pretty uh, hard uh, example, uh, pretty complex, but possible. Again, as early as possible, contact us to find the optimal stack up for your needs. Um, such complex things are not, uh, not possible as an overall standard has to be designed, especially for your needs. Feel free to contact us. We are happy to help you with this. So on this point, I will hand over back to Andreas and he wants to have some feedback from you. Okay, Andreas, uh, thank you very much. Um, short break for you. And now I would like to have your um, rating for our design guide, plugging, filling, tending. Um, if you had the chance to have a look at this design guide, please uh, rate it now. So that means uh, the worst thing could be one to two points, which means unusable document up to nine or 10 points, which means almost perfect and you can use it often. So I will now start the poll in a second. And now please make your choice. So by the way, we are today uh, nearly 100 participants in this webinar, which uh, 
is nice. Um, thank you for your participation. Actually, we have reached 70% uh, participation. So let's have another five seconds for this poll. And now I will um, close the poll and show the result. So this is how you have rated. Um, just 2% um, okay, but incomplete. So we will um, contact you for further discussion and input to improve our document. And most of the ratings are really good. So thank you very much for this feedback. And let's uh, continue with the presentation. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Andreas. Uh, it's important feedback for us. Uh, we want to update our design guide and we are really looking forward for any feedback from customer side. Uh, it's very important to have as a different look from, from your side to fulfill these needs. So to sum up our, our presentation, I tried uh, to create a quick overview. Actually, this slide was the hardest at all to create because there are so many possibilities and ifs and whens to all these technologies, but it's actually pretty hard to show it on one, one slide. Uh, I reduced it down to, to a few features. We have here the, the beer type and starting with the clearance uh, in the solder mask. Um, vacuum seal is not possible, the vias are open, uh, air can leak through and um, for example, ICT testing with a vacuum uh, suction is is not possible. We have a flat surface, uh, no bumps on top. Um, yeah, so even even uh, flat components can be put on this surface. And so the mask is typically not applied on the inner layers, so it's not not possible. On the other side, of course, so the mask. Typically, all boards have solder mask applied, so it's actually pretty cheap. It's just a design thing to take care. On the plugged vias, um, we can achieve vac vacuum seal. We have some bumps on the surface, which especially on, on small components or on complex components like BGAs, it's very problematic to have these bumps underneath, um, and it's, it's not, not a good choice. Uh, on inner layer, typically it's also not applied, but the silk screen process um, is pretty simple. Uh, so still plugged vias today are pretty, pretty often used. The filled via type 5, and because it's, it's so closely related, the type 7 uh, via um, we have a good vacuum seal. They are pretty airtight. We have through the sanding process a flat surface. Uh, you can do both technologies on the inner layer. Um, you are not to allowed to place microvias on top. So the question is, do you really need the lid on the surface on the inner layer? Because you have to pay for it. If you need it, it is possible but I found no, no uh, reason um, to do it. The effort through the different processes, uh, different galvanic steps are pretty high. Also in the production time, it takes more time uh, for the filling process than for example, a plugged via one. In the micro via, last but not least, um, is as a good vacuum seal, we can do via in pet. Uh, we have a very flat surface. It's possible on inner layers stacked and staggered. The only disadvantage is the cost and the effort to create such thing. Um, if you go for a stacked 
microvias like this, you have a sequential board. So more process steps <clears throat> and the filling itself is also pretty um, expensive. So this gives a rough idea of when to choose uh, which technology. And if you have any questions, feel free to come uh, to our sales guy or directly to our experts. And we're happy to answer you.